Hello, everyone, and welcome to Tech and Coffee's weekly series, Tech News Week, the show where we talk about all the news and happenings of all things tech. I'm Duke Carrico, and this week it's all about Google, as the tech giant kicked off its 2012 I.O. developer conference, and it had what I'm calling a barn burner of innovation. Among the many new announcements and products that were shared, Google unveiled a new version of its Android operating system, a 70-inch $200 Google-branded tablet, a streaming media device called the Nexus Q, Chrome browser for iOS-based devices, new Google Plus features, and a new Google Plus app specifically for Android tablets, updates to the Play Store interface, and even more that I doubt we're going to have time to get into on today's show. Okay. Joining me today is Andrew Rowland from uh, Louisiana, Bruce Turner from Virginia, George Dosher from North Carolina, Glenn, your last name just left me, Glenn Jones from Kentucky, <laughs> Guy Cook from uh, Washington, Jeff Zoss from uh, California, Joey Escavel from Texas, I can't believe you made it, Josh. Josh McKinney, all right. So you're from Washington. No, you're from Oregon, aren't you, Josh? Okay, very good. And Yvonne R. from Florida. Okay, guys, welcome. I appreciate you guys joining me. Uh, first of all, let's talk about Jelly Bean. There was a lot that happened. Google uh, uh, I.O. developer, uh, I, I can't remember Google having more of a uh, an event as what they had this week. It was something else. And first, let's jump into Jelly Bean. Uh, you know, you got to what they're calling a, a new user interface called Project Butter, Google Now, offline voice typing, improved voice search, more control over Android widgets, uh, uh, notifications that I personally am very excited about. I really like what the notification feature looks like. Uh, better camera functions. What do you think, guys? Is this a major update? I, I definitely think it is a major update. Uh, I think it's uh, the Google Now feature is... is I, I watched a video on that the other day, and it seems, you know, I was comparing it to Siri, uh, and it seems really fast, and uh, it seems like a great alternative to what, what Apple's offering with Siri, and maybe even a better alternative. Yeah, I would agree. In fact, it uh, you know I, my contract runs out with AT and T in November, and that's going to be my time to to switch. And I'm uh, definitely after seeing Jelly Bean ready to uh, make the switch from my trusty iPhone to uh, a new Android device at that time. <laughs> Very interesting. Anybody I, else? What do you think about Jelly Bean? I, I got a quick comment. I, you know, I I can't wait to get it. That's number one. Number two, I don't have a. I still don't have ICS yet on my. Razor phone, but um, I think it's a, it's, a, it's incredible what they what they're doing. I like that offline maps. You know, I think it's going to be really helpful. And offline keyboard too, which is you know you can compose emails offline as well. So that's two nice little features for those are you know don't always have a connection. Right, and I'm I'm, I'm curious to find out, uh, you know, because I don't know the percentage, but uh, the people who are following the fragmentation, uh, I'm wondering what, uh, if they are going to be updating any of these devices, are they just going to skip ICS completely and just go straight to Jelly Bean? Or are you, is a whole new set of hardware required for it? That's what I'm curious to find out. Well, they're shipping the Jelly Bean with the Nexus 7 and, and the Nexus phone, so that's, pre, that's already preloaded, so mm -hmm. I don't know about the rest. I think Joey's hit his head right on the nail when he said, is new hardware going to happen? That's right. that's the future. Yeah. Uh, they didn't buy Motorola to see if it could work. Yep. Mm -hmm. that's yeah, but you you think that the Motorola sure. like you know I have the Razer Max and I, I still don't have ice cream sandwich yet, right? So. Oh. I you feel you. Your pain. You know, I've I've got the note. I'm I'm still waiting on ice cream sandwich, and mm -hmm. that thought crossed my mind. I am glad I to have ice, most... yes, but I would like to have jelly bean on uh, the transformer. Yeah, right, I mean, and I think some of the some of the things that they I'm sorry, Drew, uh, no, some ahead. of the things that they they uh, improved with uh, Jelly Bean was uh, kind of improvements on Ice Cream Sandwich and and uh, 
uh, almost to the point where they knew that ICS was a good step forward, but it was just that little step for the next level. And, you know, ICS was necessary, but I think Jelly Bean is really where they wanted to start really going forward with this. Yeah, I, I agree. I think you know, also they, the, the, the new notifications are pretty cool, too, in the Jelly Bean, where you don't have to go into the app to see what the thing is. So you can go directly from the notification, and it will kind of open up the, the, the email that you got, or, and you could reply. You could do all that stuff within the notifications, and it kind of oh, made it look like cards. It's just very slick. Mm -hmm. I, I agree so much. In, in fact, uh, you know, uh, as someone who's used both uh, Android and, and uh, iOS devices, uh, you know, I always liked, early on, I liked Android's approach to notification, whereas on iOS, you actually got a pop-up. And then when, when Apple introduced the, uh, very similar to Google, it was, you know, the, the, where you slide it down, but, you know, at, let's face it, Apple's was a lot prettier to look at. It was a lot slicker looking. And, you know, uh, Android stepped up their game again. And, and uh, like I say, the, the notification system, Jeff, is what I'm excited about in Jelly Bean. I think it's awesome that I can get a notification. I can touch that notification and get additional information, and I haven't even opened up the app. I think that's just yeah. that's a very neat approach. Okay. Any other thoughts about uh, uh, Jelly Bean? Well, I think All the right, only I'll thing that's what, really going to... I think the go, only go thing that's really going to hinder is that most manufacturers are not really... There, there's two parts of this story that really hurt. Manufacturers want to put... Like uh, Motorola will use Moto Blur, and AT&T wants to throw their stuff on top of it. Users should be given the choice, do you want vanilla, or do you want AT&T's cool stuff that we throw on top of it? I'm, for one, and one of those people, I run Cyanogen Mod on everything except for my 1X. I would run it on this if I could unlock it. But it just, it, they can streamline the whole getting phones up to date if they would let them have that choice. Uh, and well, I don't do think, think it'll ever happen, unfortunately. But... Do you think that Project Butter is uh, Google's way of saying you need to quit skinning the Google interface and start using this, this new interface built that is fast, mm -hmm. fluid, and smooth? Well, yeah. like, oh, yeah. you know, throw listen, your apps, throw uh, your that, apps that, in, that's it's why, fine, but... Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's why Google, I think that's this whole approach to Project Butter myself. I think it's mm -hmm. to uh, say, hey, phone manufacturers, you can't do better than this right here. Right. You know? Nope. Yeah, but I, think that, I think they gave them the, uh, the, the ability to write to that, that API or whatever as well. So I think that's part I, I, of the I, developer stuff. I think I kind of want to take a different stance on that, and I, I, I still believe they are... Um, uh, they fully want to keep this as open as possible, and I think they do treasure the modding community. I think they like what they see and what they do mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. some of the things that they do really innovate uh, some of the feature sets that they may push in future releases. And what uh, the Project Butter really does is puts the, the software in a position where it becomes more responsive so that your skinning and right. any modding that you do is just that much better so that no matter how you skin it, no matter how you mod this thing, whenever, because it always comes up, how is it going to compare to iOS or Windows Phone or whatever, you know, how mm -hmm. is Android better than blah, you know, whether it's iPhone or Windows Phone or whatever, it's usually iPhone. And Android wants to be in that position where it says, you know what, it doesn't matter. Android is Android, and because of Project Butter, no matter what you're using, it's going to be smooth. Right. Yeah. I just hope we get to a point... And, and you may be right. I just hope we get to a point with oh, Android. Go, Andrew. I hope we get to a point in Android where where everyone, there's a, there's a requirement for hardware, and everyone gets an update at the same time, like iOS. I think we need to get to that point and, and reduce fragmentation across the Android, Android platform. And I think uh, one of the things that Google did mention, uh, I can't recall uh, from who or which panelists had said it, but uh, the idea is that 
Google would be taking more charge in pushing those updates. Uh, now, I don't know if they were just speaking about the Nexus 7 specifically or any devices out of that Nexus line or if they were just talking about, you know, we're going to force these carriers to, you know, really push these uh, updates sooner than later. Wasn't it last I.O. that they, they were saying that? They were like, we're going to get on the carriers, we're going to make, you know, and it, that was, well, it was like six months ago. I don't think it was I.O., but they were like, yeah, we're going to get on them, we're going to do this, and, I mean, I understand it's probably, you know, trying to fight a bull if you're an ant, but, you know, the, the carriers want what they want, and so it's going to be kind of interesting. Well, I, I think, uh, like I say, time will tell. I think we can all agree, though, that uh, that fragmentation is is a problem on the Android platform. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I'll tell you what, gang. Let's move on because I think the the even bigger news out of Google I/O was the Nexus 7 tablet. A little bit about the tablet. First of all, it's built by ASUS. It's got a quad core Tegra 3 processor, 1.3 gigahertz, I believe, one gig of RAM. It's running the new Jelly Bean operating system. It's got a decent screen resolution of 1280 by 800, an eight-hour battery life, which sounds pretty sweet to me as someone who has a tablet that gets maybe five hours if I'm lucky. Uh, more importantly, we're talking a $200 price point. I guess my first mm -hmm. question is, who besides Jeff has ordered a Nexus 7? <laughs> Next paycheck. <laughs> Next paycheck. <laughs> or if or I sell this guy. This proved that $200 yeah. and the Amazon Kindle proved $200 was the magic price. The HP touchpad, that, that fire absolutely. sale made it absolutely solid. This is how it needs to go. Yeah, let's just say I'm going to be visiting uh, gazelle.com and seeing what my other devices <laughs> We'll go for <laughs> I, I'm thinking that, Joey. I am thinking that. I'm telling you right now, man. I, I, to to yeah. my, de to my com, defense, sell your old electronics. <laughs> to, to my defense was I was waiting for this this tablet to come online, you know, so I could buy it because I, I knew I wanted this. So you know, I just jumped when it. I jumped with the rest of the herd. What can I say? You look like an evil scientist doing that, Jeff. Well, well you remember it. So. At CES, they, uh, Asus announced that there was going to be a tablet with a Tegra 3 quad core, and it looked like the price point was going to be about $250. I've been anxiously awaiting you know, to pull the trigger on that, but then when I began to hear rumors about $199 with uh, essentially the same hardware, I thought, mm, I'll wait a little bit. Right. And what, <laughs> what really strikes me curious with, uh, I mean, I, I'm sure all of us, we're all Google fans, and... Um, I think we're, part of it is we, we drink the same Kool-Aid, so that's part of this. But I find it interesting that we how and, and uh, Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Tech and Coffee Newsweek Part 2. And as we move on here, let's cover the, uh, the Google I.O. news, probably the biggest news of the conference was the Nexus 7 tablet, again, built by ASUS. It's got a quad-core Tegra 3 processor, one gig of RAM. It's running the new Jelly Bean, screen resolution of 1280 by 800, eight-hour battery life, and probably most important, a $200 price point. As we get started back here, I uh, want to welcome Keith Miller to the room. Uh, Keith, I guess, uh, in effect, taking Yvonne's place. Keith, welcome. Thank you. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, I had asked, just before we lost connection, I had asked Jeff about uh, uh, if anybody in the room had ordered it other than Jeff. And, and Jeff, the, all I heard was, in my defense. So if you want to pick it up right there, <laughs> in your defense, I would appreciate it. Okay. My, my defense is that I've been waiting for this tablet to happen for a little while. I've been shopping tablet, tablets. So when... During the presentation, I kept on clicking Google Play, Google Play, Google Play, and I was waiting, waiting, waiting. And as soon as they were done with the presentation, you could pre-order it, and I just pulled the trigger and, and did it. I just got the 8 gigabyte. I just want to you know, use it to play with and do the Google Hangouts and some other things. So, yes, I'm expecting it in about two weeks, two and a half weeks. So, looking forward to it. Very cool. Uh, let, me, let me ask you something. Uh, you said you, you've been waiting, and you've been waiting. 
what was it about this that made you take the plat? You you've never owned a tablet. I up actually, until yeah, no, I, I I actually purchased the Toshiba Thrive and I returned it. I didn't okay. really because I because of the uh, it didn't really work the way I wanted to, and um, so I I just wanted this because first of all it's a gadget in my mind. Anything under two hundred bucks, two hundred and twenty bucks, it's a gadget, and for two hundred twenty dollars, has a front facing camera. It has all those cool features. I can use it in the Hangouts. I just said I'm going to take the plunge and I'm going to do it. And that's pretty much why I did it. It was the price point. It was just so perfect. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, just a question to the group: Is this uh, the proverbial Kindle Fire Killer? I, I think it could even be the Microsoft Tablet Killer too, just because of the price point and then the release date. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I kind of agree. I mean, basically. I do think that you know the fire is being very popular, but I think the price point is just phenomenal. I have one person in my life that owns the Kindle Fire. She's in third grade, nine years old, Bailey, my grandniece. She thinks it's the best thing since peanut butter. <laughs> okay, she loves it. You know, I had I had the Kindle Fire, and I went through rooting it and got the full Android experience on it. But the Kindle Fire doesn't even have a microphone on it, much less a camera. Mm -hmm. So you couldn't mm -hmm. even do a Skype call. You know, uh, this this particular device just blows the Kindle Fire right out of the water. For sure. Right, and and one of the one of the things that uh, initially the Kindle Fire uh, set itself apart was that it was going to be using the Amazon Store, which does not have the full treasure trove of apps that are available to Android, but now that Android has come out with their tablet, now, you know, Google can really re-tout that or reopen that wound, if you will, and say, oh yeah, remember uh, y'all chose that because of, you know, all the apps that you could get with the Amazon store? Well, now you get every app that you ever wanted. Plus, plus the other thing is they, you know, with the Jelly Bean, right, in that butter project, it's going to probably, it's going to maximize the GPU um, that they put in there on, on the tablet, and it's just going to be, it's right. going to have a, just a better experience. So, you know, and it's shipping with the Jelly Bean um, on it, so I think that's going to be and, perfect. And as far as being a uh, Microsoft killer, I don't think you can kill something that hasn't been released yet. But uh, yeah. I, I think I think the devices are completely different. I think Microsoft is going for something that I think the the yeah. enterprise department is going to pick up more than the consumers. And so uh, I, it's hard for me personally to put the two in comparison. Uh, and even even it's kind of hard for me to even compare the iPad with this. Yeah. Well, again, yeah. I think it's a, it's a little different device. I think it's a, the in between the, between. The Kindle Fire, mm -hmm. I think it's more of a, a Kindle Fire competitor, but I think it's a step in between the iPad and the Kindle Fire because I'm of its user set yeah. and the, the horsepower behind it. Yeah. Well, what about the Nook? Is it a Nook killer too? Because everybody, well, a lot of people that, seem that to like whole, the Nook as well as the Kindle Fire. Right. I mean, I I think that uh, I think that this new Nexus 7 tablet is an iPad competitor. I don't think it's in the I don't think it's in the Nook or the Kindle in the Kindle category at all. Yeah. I think Microsoft's on its own. You know, businesses are going to use the Microsoft Surface tablet, but that's it. It's it's going to be. Well, I mean, I, I think that some will. Um, I I detect a bit of a uh, sea change in, in in businesses, and I think that much much more businesses. Are actually now thinking about cloud-based solutions, and right. you know the, the Microsoft tablet appear, appeals to those people who specifically feel they need to run Windows. Um, but I think you know they haven't released it yet, and we haven't got a, a price for it. And yeah, I think the hardware is pretty sexy the, on the Microsoft device, but I think the uh, Nexus 7 really does put the pressure on them to come up with something very special on pricing, mm -hmm. because if they don't, then people just look at it and go, "That's far too expensive." Yeah, well, I mean, even for enterprise apps. Let, let me ask you guys this question. Uh, I've got a. Uh, I, I normally don't buy things on an impulse, but I, I bought this right here. This is a little little Acer seven inch tablet. Literally, uh, I bought it on impulse. Uh, you know, there's a plethora of these out here on the market. Uh, everybody's. I mean, it's amazing what's uh, what's coming out of China. Okay, uh, they're they're decent tablets. Okay. Why? What? What makes the Nexus Seven special? 
I mean, what's because basically, basically all Google did was take a a, a a tablet that Acer already made. I mean, wasn't a thing at CES when Google approached them. What what makes the Nexus Seven such a special tablet? What, what do you guys think? Well, I think the, I think that, I think it's a it's a decent spec. Right. Where a lot of the tablets are on the market are not a decent spec. It's a decent mm -hmm. spec tablet. Not it's not the best in class. You know, you got to look at the iPad Two for that. Um, but you know, it's not the best in class, but it is a decent spec, and it's a phenomenal price point. Yeah, you know, I think and, they, and, and mm -hmm. why wouldn't you buy one? <coughs> Right. I think they yeah, were going for price. Otherwise, they would have gone for a ten a ten point one inch uh, tablet. They could yeah, have done that with exactly. Asus or somebody else. I think they were trying to hit that price point, yeah. and that's the goal. I exactly. That, I mean, I people think can't afford a you know the six hundred dollar iPad stuff is is for the is for the hipsters who kind of have the or, or the people who have the money to actually go out and and buy one as a toy. You know that suddenly you've got a two hundred dollar price point. That suddenly becomes something that people will buy as an e-reader. As as I've as I've said before, you know, two hundred dollars is disposable income to uh, to a lot of a lot of people in the world. Exactly, you know? yeah. exactly. And, they're, yeah. and they're shipping it with a twenty five dollar credit towards Play, right? Google so Play. So that they're, 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 that's what it is. It's uh, int it's intro to Google Play. It's the device yeah. to interface to Google Play. Yeah. And to and to reiterate uh, the the latest version of Jelly Bean. I mean, isn't everything cooked better with butter? So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, 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 oh, buddy. I know. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. okay. Okay. Well, sum it up as, uh, go ahead. Go ahead, Keith. Yeah, I'd say I'd sum it up as a as disruptive technology at a disruptive price. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's um, we, well, we can guess what the market's going to do, but I think you know the market's just going to go crazy over this because it's so yeah. cheap. For such a good technology, yeah. well, you know, right? Uh, uh, have I missed something? Right now, it is only available in the Play Store. Is that correct? Correct. But yeah. you know, ASUS has, uh, you know, they don't just make stuff; they uh, they ship it all over the world. So I expect them to start appearing in, in a lot of other places. So. So you wonder if Rachel Ray had anything to do with the development of this thing with the butter and all, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or Paula Dean. Uh, I Paula Dean, it's, yeah. It's just, yeah. How That's many more great. people are going to be on Google Plus? How many more people are going to join? You know, it's just a, it's a, it's just another entree to to all their other services, and that's exactly what they're doing. You know, I, I don't I don't doubt that they're actually making a loss on these. I don't doubt that at all. But that's the same as Sony did with the PS2, and it's the same as Microsoft did with the Xbox. You know, you, you do it as a loss leader, and but you know, it comes back to pay backing dividends sort of within a couple of years. Well, With, they've uh, stated they're coming out dead even. They're not losing. They're not gaining. If they are, it's very little. Hmm. Uh, so they're I, like, this I, is perfect. Yeah, I, I don't know if it's true. I've read that, like, uh, the Kindle, supposedly Amazon's losing between 4 and $7 on every Kindle sold. I'm sure that uh, they might own that Kindle, but I guarantee you they're making it back in Prime and... Amazon books exactly. and other places. Oh, exactly. and, and, also, and also, Google's making it in search, in clicks through, in, yeah. in C, you know, CPMs. Everything is going to be, you know, more mobile devices are being used on search than you, desktops. So, bingo, bingo, think, more money. Do you think we'll yep. come back around to this idea of uh, free devices that, uh, that have our ad supported? You know, maybe a Google tablet that that's ad supported, and they give you the device, and you can only use the Google Play Store. I honestly don't think so because um, my personal view is I, I spend a lot of time working in telecoms, and there's been uh, I would say an awful lot of people who've who've gone with this free ad ad funded um, services and ad funded, and and to be honest, yeah, Google can can do it because they've got the scale, but um, I don't think they'd have this, even they would have the scale to, to fund, you know, $150, $200 worth of hardware. Right. But I don't, I don't think that, uh, that uh, Amazon, because Amazon, uh, they're taking that loss uh, because of what Google is able to do. Sorry, I'm, I'm stuttering here. Um, I think Google, they're not going to take that loss because you're going to be using their search, and then yeah, their search has advertisements, so I think it's yeah. going to pay for itself. Yeah, yeah. Google doesn't have to. Amazon took a big risk, and I think that you know that could have paid off for them, and maybe it has paid for, off for them, but I think longer term, you know, 
the, the trouble with um, the trouble with that approach also is that someone will always be cheaper. Someone will always pre be prepared to give away more free. Right. And you know, companies are literally prepared to to hive off a subsidiary and have that subsidiary go out of business Look if how it much means get, you know, getting customer base. Look how much Google gives away for free now. I mean, they got Google Docs, they got you know, they got Hangouts, they got Google G Plus. They have a lot of services that are free, and this is just another like you know, another entree to their freeness and you know their profitability. It's gonna. I think it's going to do really, really well. Because I bought one. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I'll, I'll tell you what. Uh, let's, uh, let, let's move on. And, and this next one, you know, really, uh, we talked about Jelly Bean and, uh, and the Nexus tablet. And, and both of those really excited me. You know, I, I was really getting into that at the developer con uh, conference. But... Uh, uh, then they they brought out the Nexus Q and and you know they've got this it's it's a streaming device it's it's tied to Google's Play Store uh, it looks to me like it's it's designed to compete directly with products like Apple TV and and Roku uh, mm -hmm. except the fact that it's three times more and requires an additional Android device to even make it work. Uh, I, I don't know, guys. Uh, I'm not quite sure what to make of this product. Uh, I, you know, I, I look at it, some of the functionality already exists in Google's uh, Google TV, and uh, I, I don't know what what your thoughts on this, guys. Well, I, I'm quite happy to dive in on this because this is an area I'm very familiar with because I, I knew about knew this was coming um, some time ago because uh, because I have some contacts in the industry. And, um, you know, I, I agree. I don't think it's phenomenally compelling. W what will be compelling is if, if people take the, the platform and actually build on it and produce something really imp in, you know, impressive from it. But um, Joey's just mentioned in chat Sonos, but Sonos is kind of where I'm coming from because I'm actually a long-time Sonos user. Um, and, and for anyone who doesn't know, Sonos is a music system which is very similar to the, uh, the Nexus Q. Uh, in many respects, except it's been around for about six years, six or seven years now. And, um, you know, it's a multi-room system. It's not quite as um, sexy as the Nexus Q in terms of features because it's an older device. I mean, you know, they, these things have been around for seven years. Back in 2005, 2006, they didn't have the technology available to do some of the clever stuff. But it is, it is one of the, it's still the leading multi-room system around. A little bit more expensive, but it's the gold standard. And, you know, they have to compete with that. And the difference with, with, is that Sonos actually streams from Spotify, it streams from Rhapsody, it streams from Wolfgang's Vault. There, there's about, you know, half a dozen streaming services that, that, um, that Sonos works with. And it works with your own local music collection like iTunes. Which none of which this, the Nexus Q currently does. So I think it's going to be a hard push for them to actually uh, get the um, you know to get the, imp the impetus against things like Sonos, against the squeeze box range, the Slim Devices squeeze box range, the Sonos, yeah. the uh, okay. the Roku's, and the fact that all the TVs now nowadays you buy a smart TV and it's got all that functionality built in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. that uh, you know. It's uh, two different products, right? I mean, they got Google TV and then they got this. One is for the stereo, you know, supposedly in YouTube, and the other one is for um, what? So right. I, I think one of them is going to have to go away, and or, or and and, and I, I bet you that uh, it's going to be the Google TV is going to be a web-based, Chrome-based thing that interfaces to this the Q eventually or something like that because. Uh, it just doesn't make sense to have both products out there. It's very, very segmented. You know, I mean, why would they want to do that? So it's, right. I think it's got to be if they're developing something brand new with and, and doing this social, um, that social what they call the social streaming, where you can another person can add a song or add a movie mm -hmm. to the playlist yeah. of theirs onto yours. Um, you know, kind of right. it makes for joint viewing, which is you know kind of the Google experience. That's my quick take. Well, well I, I Google. Think Google Go, go, go ahead. ahead. No, no, go, go right ahead. Uh, what I was going to say, well, Google is well known for uh, uh, creating two things that seem like should be one, like Android and Chrome OS. I mean, that's one example of two things that really should be one thing. And here we have um, what was, you know, Project Tungsten, you know, with uh, 
with Google TV. And I think it's a misstep, uh, but I think eventually we'll, we, we will see it merged together, whether it merges into the queue or merges into Google TV. I, I, I think they're going to have a better marketing push if they go ahead and merge the queue with Google TV. But uh, because right now you look at the queue, and I think a lot of people are just kind of scratching their head and saying, "It's neat. Uh, I don't know exactly what I can do." And then they look at that price point, yeah. and they automatically mm -hmm. shut down. Yeah, that's you that's know, mine. You know, I've, I've I've chatted briefly with some of the Sonos guys I know because I've say like being a long time customer and actually a beta trial list for uh, for Sonos. I kind of know some of the guys, and they love this because they just see it as expanding their market. You know, people right. are going to look at this and go, "Wow, this is really good," and they're going to look around and see that. You know, it's, it validates the market for someone like Sonos, who are already the leading people in the market. Um, so, yeah. But I agree. You know, people are going to look at it and go, well, "Unless they're really hooked up on the on the social aspect of of being able to share me media streams, which to a degree you can do with the Sonos app anyway. You can run it on a smartphone and you can share Spotify playlists, and mm -hmm. you know, it's not really that new." Um, I just just think it's going to struggle a little bit, and I I actually don't think that Google actually believe in this as a product. And the reason I say that is because of the price point. If they believed in it, they would push it at a price point similar to what they've done with the Nexus Q, uh, the uh, Nexus they, Seven. They had it in the general session, in the, you know, the very first spot and the highlighted yeah, spot. I think they believe in it as an ecosystem, but I don't believe I think they believe in it as a product. I I think that just the same as Chromebooks. Chromebooks were a bit of a toe in the water, and they made a big fuss about them because they have to, but I think that they're, you know, basically trying to get something out there and say, well, let's see where it goes because we're not really sure, and we don't want to lose loads of money on it, so let's kind of price it at something where we're actually making a little bit of money on it to cover our costs in case we don't sell many. But I can, uh, I can recall you know, when they were excited about Google TV and... Uh, uh, really, yeah. they they talked about it all over stage and got me excited, and I went and bought one. And for a long time, I regretted it. I do like it now after a couple of updates, but uh, you know, hey, listen, I'm still not watching Hulu on it. So uh, yeah. there you go. You know, I, I I say it's part of an evolving ecosystem. And as um, you know, Joey mentioned tungsten. I think that they, because um, the reason I knew knew about it in advance is because I was told by one of the Sonos guys that they actually. Um, officially were told by Google that they couldn't talk to them anymore after a very close partnership on some projects and, um, and and that what was driving that was tungsten they just started doing some field trials of um, of tungsten um, and, and I think what they've done is they basically played around with the technology which tungsten was a lot broader than just you know music and media mm -hmm. and I think they played around with the technology and gone yeah actually this stuff's pretty difficult to do in the way we'd yeah. really like to do it. So let's put something out there which is a bit kind of me too. You know, it's a bit like Sonos, a bit like Squeezebox. Mm -hmm. See how well, you know, but it's got a few kind of Google twists on it and see how we go with that and, um, you know, see if we can see if we can kind of find the right direction because at the moment we're not really sure what the right direction is. Right. Okay. Well, one, quick thing, one, one quick thing before we move on. <clears throat> I, I think one important thing to mention though, I think it. It was important for Google to put this forward or advertise it as, look, we are innovating. This is something that we are interested in doing. Yeah, we're, th this might not be as baked as we want it to as far as what we're trying to accomplish, but we are doing it, and this is, this is proof that we're doing it. And, and they have asked for developer support. I think they made yeah. it clear when they when they unveiled mm -hmm. it. So we'll we'll see yeah. when it happens. I'll tell you what. Next topic, you know, uh, <laughs> Google Plus enhancements. Uh, we've got a now we've got uh, G Plus is running on. It's got its own specific app. Looks gorgeous on my seven inch tablet, but more importantly, it looks gorgeous on my Android phone also. Uh, I've, uh, I'm really liking what they've done. The events features. Uh, what do you guys think about the enhancements that were rolled out this week? I, Great. Uh, yeah, I mean, on my on my Android phone, uh, I was a little disappointed when they went into the dark the dark uh, viewing on the app, and when they went back to a light to match to match the rest of their ecosystem. I was very happy as far as design goes. Um, it makes me happy. Um, I still have had problems with the Hangouts. 
uh, from a mobile device, though, and, and it seems to have a lot of problems that way. The um, the Google Plus, yeah. the new version on my HTC Evo, the first 4G phone that they had for Sprint way back when, rocks. It okay. is ten times better than the first effort. I'm yep. I'm curious, Bruce. Can you uh, can you now join uh, a Tech and Coffee hangout from your uh, iPhone? I, I cannot. Um, you know, I, I can't. I, I can't do it by a link. I was hoping that when an event that I could go to events and be able to um, to see you know the situation and get in there, but I cannot. Okay. Yeah, I I can't from from uh, my iPad either. But uh, uh, I'm telling you, Hangouts rocks on on Android. I, mm -hmm. They they are, they're doing a great job with it. Yeah. Um, I it would just give a slightly different perspective. I, I actually love the um, feed. I, I still don't think it's as good as Flipboard in terms of presentation and usage, but the, I, you know, I absolutely love the feed. Yeah. I've got Galaxy S3, and it's mm -hmm. fantastic on that. It's fantastic on my transformer in terms of you know the feed on that. One thing I will report, though, I've had all kinds of problems with Hangouts on this. Um, Is that running ICS? Yes. It's running ICS. Yeah, see, I'm running ICS as well, and I have tons of problems with mobile Hangout. And I have, um, it goes into the Hangout, and it will go into there, and it will be fine, and then it will, it will just drop out of the Hangout, and I can't get back in, yeah. and it keeps on telling me that the Hangout's actually finished, even though it hasn't. Yeah. And um, But other than that, I mean, other than that, the, the presentation of it is fantastic. It's just lovely. Has anyone tried uh, tried to do it from a, an event? Um, I actually love yes. the event side because it's... Uh, you can just literally click on the event, past or present, and there's a little yellow t bar in there that you can just go into and join that Hangout at any time. It gives it solid links, which I think is excellent, which fixed Tech and Coffee's problem we had for a while with solid links. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 No, it's, it's fantastic. I think the video, I actually learned something from uh, Joey that I didn't know about... Uh, about the events, and that's the uh, the party feature. Joey, uh, why don't you tell how you guys used that last night uh, on a photo shoot? Yeah, well, we uh, we went to a, a, a photo thing. At, uh, it's called Drink and Click here in Austin, and you just go and shoot <laughs> photos and drink beer and and just socialize. <laughs> but uh, it was perfect timing because uh, the host uh, had created the event in Google Plus and. Uh, Everyone, you know, attended and joined, and then once the event started, you know, the little notification came up saying, do you want to put yourself into party mode? And what that does is anyone who turns on party mode on their Android device, uh, when you take photos, it goes straight into, the, into that stream, into that event stream, you know. You take a photo, it goes in there, it goes in there. And uh, it's just really neat to be able to follow along on that event and see these photos just uh, filling up in that, in, in that event. And uh, I think, I mean, Google had a better example, you know, the, the, wet, the wedding, you know, and uh, if everyone turned on their, their cameras and took pictures, you get all these different perspectives yeah. of the wedding, you know. Because at our wedding, that, uh, we put a whole bunch of cameras you know, on all the guest tables, and uh, we wanted people to shoot pictures so that we could have this collection of photos from their perspective. Well, that's exactly what this feature provides. Yeah. 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 It reminds me just a little bit of uh, the color app of uh, I don't know, maybe a year, year and a half ago, and and what they were trying to do. But this is a better implementation of it. I think that's really cool, Joey. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, uh, Jeff, I, I know you're going to have to go right here in a second, so uh, why, why don't I just go ahead and wrap this up. Guys, really appreciate it. Uh, appreciate you guys joining us. And uh, for anyone watching, let's see, looks like we've got nine viewers here now. For anyone watching, let, let me tell you guys just a little bit about Tech and Coffee. Uh, we're a, a, a semi-public Google Plus Hangout. We meet daily. And uh, some of us even do some live shows. This is a weekly series called Tech News Week. But uh, besides following us on uh, Google, you can catch us on Twitter at Tech and Coffee One. 
we've even got a Facebook page at so just uh, search on Tech and Coffee or Facebook.com slash Tech and Coffee One. Uh, you can find us on Google Plus using the hashtags TAC Newsweek. Uh, when we're doing on air, it's TAC on air Hangout. And if you just want to find us, just try TAC Hangout. Also, we've got a website, techandcoffee.info, and there's always a link to where we're hanging out on techandcoffee.info. So uh, come and check us out. Uh, guys, appreciate it. I hope uh, everyone has a, uh, uh, a great weekend, and uh, we'll do this again in about a week. See you guys later. Thanks, Thanks Duke. Take care, man. See you, Duke. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Mm -hmm.